Hello everyone, I am Torior and welcome to another one of my Hearts of Iron 4 challenges. And I'm attempting this one for the third time. Today we are going to recreate the Holy Roman Empire. The problem with that is, normally even if we do everything right, we only have a 30% chance of success because it depends on a damn random event. Uh, which is why I'm attempting this for the third time. But I think I've devised a way around this, we'll see soon. Anyway, regular difficulty Iron Man mode historical focuses, let's go. Yeah, German Reich 4. So, how do we recreate the Holy Roman Empire? First, we need to oppose Hitler and follow the path that will lead us to an alliance with the Allies. Let's start by opposing Hitler. We must also follow a special chain of events as well as get lucky, because normally we only have a 30% chance of this succeeding. Uh, which is, again, why I'm doing this for the third time. Uh, but I think I have a way around this, we'll see. I've switched our production around a bit. We start with 30 units. Now we're going to start a civil war soon, so we're going to lose quite a lot of them. Unless we use a trick. I actually learned this one from the Spiffing Brit, it was in one of his videos. If you're doing a civil war, you can just send your troops out to sea, and they should uh, remain yours, even when the war starts. Germany is normally geared towards Blitzkrieg, uh, but I am a fan of superior firepower, so let's switch that. Other research, pretty generic. All right, let's speed up and unpause. Uh, one more thing, yes. Let's also train up some more infantry. Let's give them the highest priority. Only do this once, deploy them here. Hopefully we can have a few done before the civil war starts. I could, of course, train a lot of cavalry, but we don't necessarily need that many units. The Spanish civil war just triggered. Um, I will take them over later. Right, Opus Hitler is almost done. Let's deploy all these units and cancel uh, the remaining ones. Send you over here. And here we go. Wehrmacht officers challenge Hitler. When we click this, the civil war will start. But we don't have to click this right away. While we are still fascist, I'm going to start justifying some war goals. We're going to attack Switzerland and Yugoslavia. And Czechoslovakia will come in to defend Yugoslavia. Why Switzerland? Well, for easier access to France. And Yugoslavia, mostly for Czechoslovakia, but also to get some extra territory. I will want to attack them simultaneously. So we have to first justify on Switzerland. Then justify on Yugoslavia, then cancel the justification on Switzerland, and redo it. If you are confused about how that works, look for a video titled Avoiding Guarantees or something like that on my channel. I explain it in detail there. Our next national focus will be four-year plan. We have done the justifications, now I'm going to transport these guys navally here. Once they're at sea, okay, now we can trigger the civil war. And we should retain control of these units. We retained control of 48 out of 49 that were present. Now we are ruled by glorious August von Mackensen and we can destroy Hitler. Now with this trick the civil war of course becomes way easier, uh, but we could also win it without too much trouble because Mm, because our guy has 20% attack and defense on core territory and this is all core territory. We have enough units to form three armies. Let's send them right to the front lines. Attack immediately and aggressively. I also want to promote Heinz Guderian into a field marshal, because he has the brilliant strategist trait. So we'll be using him as a field marshal. We're also going to train up Erich von Manstein and uh, this guy Albert Kesserling uh, to be field marshals in the future, because they have this trait that I like. As for the last general, let's use Kurt Student, as he is a commando. Attack aggressively. Civil war in Germany is happening, and it will not take long. Yeah, these events, Nazi expulsions take heavy toll on province, uh, are not really a problem, because they only damage the factories, and they will eventually repair on their own. And we have already reached Berlin, and found Hitler dead. He preferred to commit suicide rather than let non-Nazis win. And Germany has capitulated. This was a very quick civil war. Boom, we have annexed the German Reich. We have captured the Nazi leaders and there are two things we can do with them. We can imprison them so that we might use them later, or we can kill them. If we imprison them and then become fascist or communist, we could reinstate them, but yeah, let's kill the Nazis. As you can see, the extra units we got for the Civil War were disbanded. Let's train a couple more. I suppose three full armies should be enough. We're just fine on Switzerland and Yugoslavia, and if my predictions are correct, they will get no additional guarantees. After securing the new state, let's revive the Kaiserreich. 
Now, that will cause some extra world tension. I hope that is not enough for Switzerland and Yugoslavia to be guaranteed. Also, let's go to free trade, which is uh, the best trade policy. I would also like to hire a captain of industry, but I need 300 political powers saved for when we start uh, the war. Let's promote our guys to field marshals. I will be using them as generals still, and I will only be giving them field marshal traits, and they will be necessary later on. Revived the Kaiser Reich. Well, not yet. Return of the Kaiser will take some time to be available. For now, let us rebuild uh, the nation, and let's establish a new and better Germany. We don't need Prussian militarism for now. Let's move over to this side and do Grossraumwirtschaft. We're going to let the Swiss into our territory for a little bit. And then we're going to counter-attack, because crossing the mountains and the river is a bit difficult. We're going to let them come in here and then strike back at them. As for Czechoslovakia, and they did not have enough time to uh, prepare proper defenses. So we're just going to attack them normally and break through. And yes, everyone be aggressive. I know we're attacking forts and so on, but we'll manage. And we don't really worry about losses too much. Our justifications on Switzerland and Yugoslavia are ready, but I'm going to delay the attack a little bit, as much as I can, in fact. Hopefully they don't get any extra guarantees, uh, because I will want to stay in this war for a long time. And the later we start it, the better it especially should be for us. See, the main problem with restoring the Holy Roman Empire is that you can't get the Hindenburg disaster event. If you do, you just can't do it. And it's random, you have a 70% chance of getting the Hindenburg disaster and 30% chance of getting a Hindenburg incident. And if you get Hindenburg disaster, you just, you just can't restore the whole Roman Empire. If I understand correctly, the Hindenburg, either disaster or an incident, will happen between the 5th of May of 37 and the 5th of May of 39, if we are at peace. Which means I'm going to want to stay at war for the next two years. The war goals are about to expire, let's attack both Yugoslavia and Switzerland. Now let's wait for Czechoslovakia to accept the call to arms. They have. Oh right. What we do now is... Oh, I should get the infantry expert. Yeah. Anyway, what we do now is we go to war economy. But wait, we can't. Our enemies don't have enough factories, we have way more. Well, that's only partially true. See, if I, for example, use all my civilian factories to buy steel from the United States, look at this number. From 81, we go down to 42. And now, surprise, surprise, we can do war economy. Well, of course, now I don't need that steel anymore, so let's cancel the deal. Also, since we are non-aligned, it's going to be difficult for us to go to extensive conscription. Let's do that now. Finally, to minimize our losses, let's hire an infantry commander. Germany at war again, yes. And we can accept some volunteers from Italy. Now, Switzerland should get into our territory soon. Yes, I'm letting them. Come on, come on, spread out. That should do it. Yeah, the attacks on Czechoslovakia will be a bit problematic, but we don't really care about the losses that much. We have a wonderful amount of factories and manpower, so this will not be a problem. All right, now, you counterattack on Switzerland. They should not stand a chance. Go straight for the victory points. Let's surround them a bit. And here it goes. Now Switzerland should be capitulating. And of course, we're going to take all states. Thank you. That is going to make invading France much easier, because we won't have to worry about the Maginot line. Now we can relocate you guys to Czechoslovakia. We're also doing a line Hungary and Romania so that we can invite them to a faction, or rather create a faction with them uh, to integrate war economies and make them our puppets peacefully. Uh, just focus on Bratislava. There we go, Czechoslovakia, take all states. World tension at 27%. And I can create a faction with Hungary when world tension is at 40%. Let's go to the Hungarian border. We're going to be attacking Yugoslavia from there. Later on. Now we have to stay at war until 1939. Japan declaring war on China. 35% world tension. 36. 37. Can we go higher? No. Austria would accept a faction with us. That would be wonderful. Yes, Austria, we would really like to get you in our faction. But for that, we need world tension to be high. Why would we need Austria to be in our faction? Well, because they can get a referendum event, just like Anschluss. But for that, we need 40% world tension, goddammit. Uh, let's do Altaki and hire a captain of industry. Ah, the wonderful speed of the German buffs. Italy announces claims on Yugoslavia, and it's 39, goddammit. Let's prepare a new template that we will be using. Duplicate this. 
call it uh, Kaiser Division. Just save it as what it is right now. I'm gonna need how many? How about a full army? 120. Can I get that many? No. Let's make it smaller then. Alright, we can make 120 of them. I'm not going to deploy them, and also I'm going to modify it quite heavily. It's gonna be a classic 7-2 with support. Why did I modify it before? Well, so that we can queue up more. Not gonna be deploying them, just uh, have them in training for a while. Give them some signal and logistics companies. Time for an extra research slot. Yes, I'm doing this incredibly slowly, but we need to stay in this war until May 39. This way we should have a 100% chance of my plan succeeding. Oh well, I suppose I'll do Return of the Kaiser. I wanted to delay this, but it's fine. Unfortunately, I'll need to disband my armies before this is complete. Why would I need to disband my armies? Essentially, what we're doing is we're inviting Wilhelm II, who is in exile in the Netherlands, to return. And if uh, the Dutch are afraid of our powerful armies, they'll just let him go. But if uh, we are weak and they are strong, then they will not agree and they will not let him out of their country. Which is what we want to happen. So right before this is done, I'm going to be disbanding my armies. And right after that, I'm going to be deploying new ones which are currently in training, so no harm done, hopefully. Let's add the logistics and signal companies to that. The focus is almost complete and there was no new world tension, so unfortunately I'm going to have to disband my armies. For a moment. And after the focus is done, I'm going to reform them, of course. Also, create a faction with Hungary, hopefully. Alright, Return of the Kaiser is done. Who's going to create a faction with me? All of them can. But I'm not sure if I'm allied with one, if the others would come in. We'll see. Anyway, let's first wait for the Dutch response, shall we? Netherlands prevents return of the Kaiser. Exactly. They have stopped Wilhelm III from returning to Germany. Now, we can go to war with them, of course. But... We can also accept their decision and get Wilhelm III instead. And that is exactly what we want. We have Wilhelm III, popular figurehead. Yes, not great, but he opens up a path to greatness. Next, let's deploy our units and create a faction with Hungary. Your faction name here is going to be definitely not a ploy to annex you. The dawn of definitely not a ploy to annex you through integrated war economies. Alright, and another block return of Wilhelm II. So we get Wilhelm III instead. Now, Austria, let's invite you to... Oh, you don't want anymore. Why? Well, at least I can get Romania. We now have Hungary and Romania in our faction, so we're gonna do integrate war economies. And thus, we're going to make them our puppets. Why don't you want to join me? Maybe when Hungary becomes my puppet, maybe they have a beef with them or something. Nationalist Spain was annexed by Republican Spain. Nope, still don't want to join. Well, I suppose once we deal with Yugoslavia, they will want to join. And we can now deal with Yugoslavia through Hungary and Romania. Speaking of Hungary and Romania, integrate war economies. Oh, crap. Okay, I'm going to request all your troops. And make sure that you do not advance into Yugoslavia. Do not attack. In the meantime, let's continue down this path and expatriate all the communists. Get out, communists. We need to stay at war until the 5th of May 1939 at least. France will become communist thanks to this. Now it's time to accept British naval dominance. Let's make a lot of infantry equipment too and send it to our puppets to lower their autonomy. Except British naval dominance. Now, once we do an alliance with the Shade, we will be able to do what we need to do. I will also like to annex Austria beforehand. So let's do one other focus first. What should it be? Let's do Reichsautobahn. Build some stuff in our puppet's territory to lower their autonomy. We could go towards an alliance with the Shade, but uh, I still want to get Austria first. And it's May now, so the Hindenburg thing should not happen. Let's activate all the orders and take over Yugoslavia. This will take a moment only. And... Oh, the left ascended in France. Yes, more communism in France. Shouldn't you be surrendering? Yes, you should. Let's annex Yugoslavia completely. 
Now, Austria, would you like to be my ally? Why not? Should have invaded them. Anyway, can we do the nice decisions now? Yes, reinstate Prince Wilhelm's right of succession. He was disinherited by Wilhelm II, but we're Wilhelm III, so we can reinstate that. Now, we can modernize the succession law, so Wilhelm IV daughters, including Victoria, can inherit. Yeah, I don't think I can do anything here. Hmm. Okay, what if I dismantle our faction? Because it's just me and my puppets in it, so I don't have to keep it. Would you like to create... Yes, you would like to create a new faction with me, of course. Okay, that's much better. Definitely not a ploy to annex you either. New faction with Austria. All right, that worked. Now we have uh, an event with 60 days meantime to happen, which uh, might make them annexed by us. Let's do bulwark against Bolshevism in the meantime. So the Hindenburg did not happen. This is a sure way to prevent it. Apparently. Did I miss something? The Six Extensive Military Pact. It's not my problem. Let's revoke the guarantee. I'm not sure if that changes anything. Probably not. If they don't want to join, I'll just annex them. Maybe something went wrong with uh, the event. Let's do the alliance with the Shade. But the event should have happened already. It has a mean time to happen of 60. There it is. Wonderful. Yes, the lesser German solution was a mistake. Vote on the referendum and they have a 90% chance of saying yes. We would have to be very unlucky for this to not work. And it works. Good. Austria is now ours, German Empire is larger. Well, we could have annexed that much earlier, but uh, we had to stay at war with Yugoslavia. And now we're going to be joining allies. I'm not sure if we can uh, stay in the faction for this to work, so let's destroy this faction. Now we are doing the alliance. With the allies, let's justify a war goal on Italy. Hopefully we can... Oh, right with Bulgaria. Belgium joined allies and Liberia joined allies. That happened because I started justifying a war goal on Italy. I'm not sure if I will be able to continue that once I join the Allies. Uh, we'll see. If we can't get out of the British shade, let us join it. German Empire joins the Allies. United Kingdom welcomes us. Great. Wonderful. Am I still justifying? I am indeed still justifying. Good. Now the important part comes. The most important part, restoration of British titles. But for that we need them to like us more. And the Hindenburg is not destroyed, which was the problem earlier, which is why I'm doing this for the third time. Because the Hindenburg has only 30% chance of surviving. But by being at war between 37 and 39, we prevented it from happening. Now, let's improve relations with the British. Actually, they dislike us because we generated world tension. Well, good thing we didn't generate more. Because this is necessary, they need to like us. And there we are, 100 relations. What we need to do now is request the restoration of British titles. Essentially the British titles were revoked from German families. Now we're friends again, so we request the restoration. What's gonna happen? A grand ceremony is going to happen. British government accepts request. It is proposed by imperial advisors that the entire extended royal family make a grand entrance using the very pinnacle of German technology, the state-of-the-art Hindenburg airship. We shall send a liaison. Or we should all travel together. We should send a liaison, Princess Victoria, ahead of time so she can um, survive, prepare uh, the reception. Yes, let's do that. Hindenburg aflame in London. Oh, we're so surprised. In a terrible tragedy, the Hindenburg was destroyed today while attempting to dock in London. For reasons not yet determined, the airship was engulfed in flames and crashed to the ground, claiming the lives of all passengers and crew abroad, including virtually all members of the extended German imperial family. The only survivor is the Princess Victoria Louise, who was sent ahead to aid in the preparations of the ceremony. The princess, the third to bear the name Victoria after her grandmother, German Empress Victoria, and her great-grandmother Queen Victoria has therefore become the only remaining heir to the throne. Still shaken from having lost her family, she has now nevertheless ascended to the throne as Kaiserin Victoria I of the German Empire. Or it should be Victoria III, was it, shouldn't it? Anyway, long live the Kaiserin. We have Victoria, Kaiserin of the people. Weekly stability increase. Our stability is going to be growing all the time and stability and war support, and political power gain 15%. She's better than Hitler. We're still a member of the Allies, 
and now we can create the Holy Roman Empire. Well, not yet. We'll need quite a lot more territory. We will need Italy, Netherlands, Belgium, Luxembourg and France for this to happen. We already have Austria and Switzerland. Also, as a member of the Allies, we will be able to call quite a lot of friends to a war with Italy. Now, the Red Menace is rising, so we'll have to fight France and the Soviet Union as well. But that is not something that will happen right at this moment. Oh, we have bypassed the treaty with the USSR. Well, let's get an offense expert. France is welcomed into the Comintern, which is going to be a bit of a problem eventually. It's still democratic though, weirdly enough. Let's request forces from our puppets. They can become helpful in invading Italy. Victoria angered by Italian posturing. Yes, yes she was, wasn't she? All those Italians and their posturing. France has become the French Commune, and thus a threat. Our justification on Italy is ready. Well, I think it's time to attack and declare war on Italy. And oh yeah, of course, let's call everyone in. Yes, United Kingdom, I would like you to join the war. Your naval power might prove useful. Canada, Belgium, everyone's joining. Oh, and that is a naval invasion by Italy, which is a bit of a problem, but we do have a remedy right next to it. Are we getting through? Oh, yes, we are. Oh, cool. Hopefully the Brits can attack from the south. We will lose quite a lot of manpower and equipment. How much exactly? Maybe I should go balanced. Let's go balanced. We've done army innovations too. Well, let's focus on the Eastern Front. Actually, can't blanch for Alsace and French colonies. That would put us at war with the Comintern, but we don't necessarily need to fight them. Not immediately, at least. Sure, I don't think this war will expire. Let's do carte blanche for Alsace and French colonies. We might want to attack France right away. Mm, our assault in Italy is not going as well as I hoped it would, but it is also not horrible. They are not calling in Bulgaria. Perhaps they are, but Bulgaria is scared. Let's get all those troops away from their borders. Make them feel safe for a moment. Do you feel safe now, Bulgaria? Do you feel safe enough to join the war? I can actually annex them, but I don't have political power for that. How did I not notice this? Oh, they start at a different puppet level when you are not fascist. That's why I didn't notice this. We need some political power, Victoria. Getting deeper into Italy. Bulgaria still not willing to fight. I really could use a naval invasion down here. Yeah, our advance in Italy is very slow. But it is sufficient. Let's annex uh, Hungary first. But the annexation of Romania can wait a bit. I still don't have enough political power, and I want for a moment. Well, I suppose I can do see to the Eastern Front. Italy can't hold on forever, but they can hold on for quite a long time. Slow and steady. Oh. Assassination of Trotsky and some naval invasions are, are happening. Although I would have preferred if you went after Palermo. Maybe you will. Getting closer to Rome. Why do you have white uniforms? It's August. Hmm. Danzig for guarantees sounds tempting. Let's guarantee Poland. Let's be friends with Poland. Danzig for guarantees. In the meantime, Italy is almost done for. Although getting across the strait here is always a problem. Of course, the orders disappeared. <laughs> Italy has capitulated. All right, do we want them as a puppet or do we want them annexed? How many ships do you have? You have one ship. I think I'll go with the next. All right, that should do it. Goodbye, Italy. Okay, the Soviets are doing claims on Poland. That could be in my best interest. Luxembourg and Denmark all joined allies. Since France is in the Comintern, we also have to prepare to fight the Russians. I suppose I could just fortify the borders and sit there until France is done for. Level 6 forts everywhere should do the trick. Hmm, justification. Bulgaria is justifying on Romania, really? Well, that's mighty stupid of them, but uh, by all means, go ahead. I have bypassed the focus to safeguard the Bal Baltics because the Soviets got it already. Danzig for guarantees. Poland accepts, really? That is a lot of territory we're getting. Well, in that case, I will gladly defend Poland. Poland returns Danzig. Wonderful. Gdańsk is Danzig again. Or Danzig, I think that's how it should be pronounced. I'm not sure. Declare war and call all allies. There we go. United Kingdom is called in. And everyone else is called in as well. Right, uh, the Maginot Line is going to be a problem, but we're attacking from all sides. I couldn't just leave this one 
unattacked. Did you call in the Soviet Union? You did not call in the Soviet Union. That is interesting. Of course, we are moving into the French Commune. And Republican Spain is still not in the Comintern. So we will not have to get through Spain. Maginot is still defended. Hmm. It's nice being part of the Allies and attacking people. And I don't think the Soviets will actually join this war. Which is... Strange. The French Commune will fall soon. And then, well, I suppose we could deal with the Soviet Union as well. Japan demands French Indochina. And France has capitulated. Good. Alright. Can I take all states? Not all of them, no. Let's pass. Okay, that's all of mainland France. Can we get more than that? France is now ours. What else do we need to do? Well, we don't necessarily need to defeat the Soviet Union, but it could be helpful. We need to defeat the Allies, actually. Let's see what we're missing to revive the Holy Roman Empire. Only Netherlands, Belgium and Luxembourg. Oh! The UK has kicked us from the faction. Why would you do that? You know what? It doesn't matter. Uh, I'm going to ask you for military access and then invade you in retaliation for kicking me out of the faction. Let's do all the 66 on Britain. Let's annex Romania. The Soviet Union has just attacked Poland. Should we help them? Poland invokes guarantee. Join Poland. Oh, I do have to join their war. That is unfortunate, but uh, I suppose you guys might be enough to deal with that. Let's delay this as much as we can. Two armies to deal with the Benelux countries and three armies in Britain. Okay, looks like three armies are right about as much as we need. I managed to send a unit to every coastal province. Once these guys are in position, we'll be able to uh, probably invade Britain successfully. I think we're ready to answer the Polish call to arms. Okay, let's create a faction. Just call the faction HRA. And let's activate those orders. It's just three armies, but they should be helpful. I have a claim in Belgium on Gabon. That will make it faster, the justification I mean. Sure, let's do that. Yeah, this is looking very promising, isn't it? You know what? This is a bad idea. We can conquer the Allies later. It is always a bad idea to start a war on two fronts if you don't have to. I'll continue justifying my war goal in Belgium because this is a take-claimed state, so it will not expire. But uh, yeah, let's just attack the Soviets and deal with them. Also, let's stop the construction engineering thing because I still haven't hired the army experts. Sorry, I haven't been sleeping well lately. That might be impacting my decision making. Justification on Belgium is great. You're having supply troubles, but you should manage to destroy the Soviets. Also, we have secured the Spanish border, just in case. Fall of Kiev. Let's switch on manpower law. Service by requirement. Right, advancing nicely into the Soviet Union. Half green, half red. That is actually good if you're on the offensive. Now all that we require is patience. And manpower. We also require manpower. Let's hire an army logistics expert. Should have done that a long time ago. Ah, see? Republican Spain joins common turn. Well, we are ready. How are we doing? Oh, the northern offensive is actually doing quite well. We are reaching Moscow. Stalingrad is taken. How far are you from capitulation? So far. Mm, yeah, I can support that amount of production on free trade. Unfortunately, we have to go to limited exports. Are you going to be successful? Success! We have taken Moscow. Bulgaria and Greece fighting it out? Not my problem. I'm going to need to refill my manpower. I think I'll pop at the Soviet Union for a moment. Oh, they have called in Spain, finally. The Soviet Union is almost done for. Then we can relocate tons of troops here and just beat them with that. Oh, and we're through in Spain. Good. Okay, they have been cut off. Take Kazan. That should be enough. Soviet Union has capitulated. Thank you very much. There's still Mongolia and Tantuva. Bulgaria has capitulated. Greece has annexed Bulgaria. We've managed to capitulate Tantuva. I wasn't paying attention to Spain for a while and I made a little excursion to France. But I'm dealing with it now. It's not a problem. How long until Spain capitulates? Not long at all. We're almost there. Finally, Spain has capitulated. Alright, what are we gonna take? Well, normally I just take everything. However, I am missing manpower. I used way too much manpower on this. And a good way to refill manpower is through puppets. Although they do cost a lot of political power to annex. No, it's fine. Let's puppet the Soviet Union. And let's puppet Spain. Let's annex Mongolia and annex Tanutuva. Okay, we have a Russian puppet and a Spanish puppet. What we need to do now is annex our puppets. 
draining their manpower. Let's see how much manpower they have. Uh, 11 million in Russia. And almost 1 million in Spain. Well, Russia would have been enough. Uh, I'm going to need to annex you. Let's just build them some military factories. Now let's prepare some manpower stealing divisions. Call it Edit. And just leave one cavalry unit in it. And train a lot of those. We are no longer bulwark against Bolshevism because we are in a faction with Russia, but Russia is no longer communist, so this should not apply. Oh well, it was not a big deal anyway. This is gonna be a Russian manpower thief division. And make the same for Spain. Let's just use a division of infantry for Spain. I also am transporting some of my troops to Britain. Yeah, these Romanian troops went back to Romania. Only there is no Romania. We can now annex Russia. Before we do that, though, we need to drain their manpower. So, deploy all these units and switch them to the Russian manpower thief template. And observe uh, the Russian manpower. 11 million. Zero. Now they're going to suffer horrible attrition, of course, but it doesn't really matter. Now we annex Russia. There we go. Now I need to do the same thing to Spain. And we have 11 million manpower in the bank now. Spain is just 1 million manpower, but uh, every million counts. I could do a full order 66 in Britain and just put one unit in every province, but that's quite a lot of work. So I'll just spam a lot down south and then move north. All right, we can now annex Spain. Let's switch those units to Spanish units. Watch their manpower drain to zero. Okay, cool. And annex them. Deployed a lot of units in uh, the Benelux countries. I'm going to attack them and then I'm going to form the Holy Roman Empire and end uh, the challenge. Let's declare war on Belgium. Take claimed state. There you go. I suppose I can call in Poland. Ah, I don't need to. And there we go. They've been called in. Oh, I forgot. Denmark is in the Allies. Let's take one of the armies from here and send them to deal with Denmark. And as we are at war with Britain now, I can annoy them by saying Plymouth, Portsmouth and Yorkshire. Ha, take that. Let's activate. Of course, such a large unit is not getting the full benefits of a general, but they really don't need it here. Also, let's make sure everyone is super aggressive. Now, we're not going to be able to annex them for a while because the Allies involve great powers like the United States and, well, we won't be going over uh, the ocean. But what we are going to be doing is capitulating the Benelux and Britain and forming the Holy Roman Empire. Are they afraid of us? I think they're afraid of us. Let's uh, retreat our units from their borders for a moment. Same for Luxembourg. Let's leave them some space. Luxembourg has been called in, okay. In the meantime, we're moving north in Britain, without too much opposition. Actually, without any opposition. Belgium capitulated, and Luxembourg has capitulated. We still need the Netherlands, but it seems like they might feel threatened by this huge German army on their doorstep. So let's all go to Munich. Come on. Denmark has capitulated, good. All right, I think I need to... I need to justify a separate war goal. Or the Netherlands is gonna take forever, of course. Finally, thank you very much. The Netherlands have been called in. Let's get all of you guys back to the front lines now. It's a naval invasion. No, they actually attacked from Gibraltar. Huh, I forgot they had that. Alright, let's deal with that quickly. Yeah, the thing with fighting the Allies is you have to watch out for naval invasions. Um, but we don't really mind that much. Let's just take the Netherlands, form the Holy Roman Empire, and end. About to dick comes to them. And they should be capitulating now. And so they have. Clean it up a bit, because there's still American forces in the area. Okay, now we should be able to form the Holy Roman Empire. Scroll down the decisions, and here it is. Revive the Holy Roman Empire. There we go, Holy Roman Empire, yes, but look at the flag. And at the units. That was actually the whole goal of our campaign. Rebirth of the Holy Roman Empire. Empress Victoria has revived the Holy Roman Empire. There we go. That is all that we actually needed to do. We didn't even need to fight on the Soviets. Still, if I were to continue this, which I'm not going to do, because at this point we have one and a half thousand factories and millions of manpower, and there is no challenge left in the game. But if I were to continue this, what we would need to do is, of course, purge this invasion that I missed, 
and this one, then secure all the ports everywhere, then proceed to use our industrial might to focus on some dockyards and naval production, finally dominate the Atlantic, invade the United States, in the meantime also invade Afghanistan and the British Raj from there, and that would make the Allies capitulate and be annexed. But we're not going to do that, because at this point we are unstoppable and it would be rather boring. So, I'm going to end this challenge here, I hope you enjoyed it, and I will see you again soon. Goodbye.